Lesson 96, we're going to look at a few different concepts. The first one is um, just graphing uh, a couple of uh, different solutions or whatever. This one says graph x is less than 3. Well, we've done graphing of x is less than whatever, greater than or equal to, but now it's giving a domain. D stands for domain. All right, and what that means is just the possible uh, numbers that it's looking for. So the domain here is only positive integers. So zero, for example, that's not an integer. Remember, integers are one, two, three, four, five, infinite all the way up, uh, and so on. Negative numbers, those are not integers. Or, sorry, negative numbers are integers, but it's only asking for positive integers. Okay, no fractions, no decimals, no nothing. So, if I was graphing x is less than 3. All right, well, here's 3. However, this uh, number is not... We're, in the past, we've done something like that and shade to the left. That would not work here because, for example, what about 2 and 1 half? That's not an integer. All right, little frowny face. That's not an uh, integer. It's got a decimal. So, therefore, we cannot just do an open circle and shade to the left. What we have to do, and since we're only doing positive integers, well, the only two that are less than three, okay, positive greater than zero, would be one and two. So this would be the graphing of x is less than three, with the domain of only positive integers. All right, it's less than three, so three doesn't count. Zero is not an integer, and then negative numbers don't count. So one and two, those are my only solutions. Now let's look at one more uh, graphing problem. Example four, it says graph negative x plus four is not greater than two. That's what this sign means. Anytime you see um, the slash through an inequality sign, that means it is not whatever. So when that happens, what we need to do is start by rewriting the problem and changing this to the opposite. So the opposite of greater than would be less than or equal to. Okay? So you got to do the opposite. That's all you do when you see that slash. You completely change it. And now my, uh, we'll get through the domain in a second. Negative x plus 4, now we got to solve for x. So we subtract 4. Negative x, less than or equal to, negative 2. Divide by negative 1. And when we divide, we have by a negative. When we divide or multiply by a negative, we have to switch the sign. So it becomes x is greater than or equal to a positive 2. x is greater than or equal to positive 2. So we got from here to there. Now let's talk about graphing it. Start with 2 in the middle. Oh, that's good enough. All right. Being a perfectionist. Here we go. All right, domain. So since it is equal to 2, we can go ahead and fill in a circle here. Now it's not talking about integers. In this case, it's talking about real numbers. So real numbers or everything on the number line. So since it's greater than two, that's th everything above two, we can actually shade all right, everything to the right because it is all real numbers. If there's integers, you would have to circle them in, but that's not our case here. So that's how you do the graphing. Uh, it's not gonna ask you to do all those integers infinite, so. That's how you do the graphing. Now let's look at one more uh, juicy type of problem. <clears throat> uh, example number six. We did this the last lesson, a similar one to this. Now we're gonna add one thing. We're gonna add one thing. Well, we already know that we wanna do substitution. So we add the x to the other side. So we get y equals x plus 1. 
we plug that in for y, so we get x squared plus x plus 1 squared equals 9. Just doing the same steps we did in the last one, and I'll show you what gets different. So we FOIL x plus 1 times x plus 1 first. x squared outside plus x inside plus x last plus 1. So now, all right, we added these like terms, got 2x, now we're at this point, add more like terms, x squared plus x squared, 2x squared plus 2x. Uh, since we already know that this is going to be, uh, we're going to have to square, or we can't square root different things, or we can't factor, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for, we can't factor. We're going to actually subtract the 9. So it's going to be a negative 8 equals 0. From this point, we can factor out a number. We can't factor out the x. We're going to have to solve for x by factoring. Um, in a second, I'll, show, I'll explain all that in a second. Just keep with the steps. So we can factor out the 2, or basically divide everything by 2, and be left with x squared plus x minus 4 equals zero. All right, hopefully you followed to this point. Now from here, we generally want to ask the question, what multiplies to be negative four and adds up to be positive one? Well, there's nothing in this scenario that would do that. So if we have one of those situations, that's where we use the quadratic formula. All right, remember? x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we got to resort to using the quadratic formula, or you could totally use completing the square. We're going to use this one. So our a is 1, our b is also 1, c is negative 4. Plug all those in, so x equals negative 1 plus or minus. 1 squared is 1, minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 4, all over 2 times 1, so 2. So now we solve. I'm going to erase this so I can keep, well, I can use this side over here. All right, x equals negative 1, plus or minus, simplify, all right, negative 4 times negative 4, that would be a, positive 16, so 1 plus 16 would be 17, and that's all over 2. So we got for x, x equals, now this is going to be a doozy and look like a lot, but it's not too bad. x equals negative 1 plus radical 17 over I'll write it this way, over 2, and then x equals negative 1 minus radical 17 over 2. All right, we just did the plus or minus. All I did was separate it to get to this point. So we know what x is. We've solved for x. Here's where it gets fun. Now we're going to solve for y. Now all you got to do to solve for y, okay, is plug in x uh, since we have y by itself here we're going to plug in our x values for x so negative 1 over 2 plus radical 17 over 2 plus 1 so I just plugged in x got 1 so from this point my like terms all right, I'm going to erase the parentheses, though, just to show you what I'm plugging in. From this point, what's 1 plus negative 1 half? Well, positive 1 half. So y, when x is negative 1 half plus radical 17, y would equal, uh, and technically they do this as coordinate form, so I'll write it as coordinate form. y would equal positive 1 half plus radical 17 over 2. So hopefully you can kind of see how I 
write that as the answer. Because all that is 1 plus negative 1 half, positive 1 half. So this stays the same. Now we just got to plug in negative 1 over 2 minus radical 17 over 2. And notice it stays the same as well. When we add these together, that's a positive 1 half. And the only difference is the sign in the middle. It's a negative radical 17 over 2. So when x is negative 1 half minus radical 17 over 2, y would be positive 1 half minus radical 17 over 2. Looks like a lot. It's a lot of steps, but not a difficult process, just using what we know. And that is uh, the end of Lesson 86.